In this tutorial I want to look at the toolpath strategies and techniques associated with creating inlays. Uh, now I've created an example here which really is meant to just to help you visualize uh, what a typical e inlay looks like. Now obviously in the examples in this tutorial we're going to use a single um, job because it's, it's easier for you to see both parts of the design uh, simultaneously while we discuss it. But typically what you would do is actually cut the different parts of your inlay from different materials which I, I'm trying to show you in this um, image here. So for example um, you might have a wooden sign uh, which you want to have lettering in. So you would cut in the wooden sign a pocket and then from a different piece of material, for example some coloured acrylic sheet, we might cut um, the matching letters that we would subsequently assemble. So having cut out all the component parts we would take our um, acrylic letters and place them inside the pockets we'd pre-prepared uh, in the main base of the sign. So this uh, example though shows immediately what the problem is going to be. If we try and take this acrylic sheet, this is the, both these letters have simply been cut uh, naively by profiling exactly the same geometry. Um, so while the letter E in both cases was exactly the same size, uh, because of the nature of our rotating tool here that we've used to cut it out, which unfortunately is um, an inevitable aspect of using a rotating tool to cut out your profile, um, the diameter of the tool has necessarily left these radii in the internal corners of the shape. And unfortunately for us, when we're creating an inlay, um, the relative parts of the shape that are internal are different. So just to uh, clarify what I mean there, as we come in to cut the male part out here, this is an internal corner because the tool can't uh, overcut into the part uh, and so it must leave a radius at this point. However, on the female pocket that we've created, we are free to move uh, cleanly into the pocket and so we can cut an extremely accurate uh, sharp corner in that case. Uh, however, on the female, you can't do the tips of the letters for the same reason. And on the male, we have cut very clean square um, tips on the letters. Now I'm going to turn the toolpaths on now so we can see this. And also when I do this, I've got the show tool 2D previews and solid switched on because we're going to cut to the 2D view in a second. So you, these checkboxes allow the 2D view to show you a solid representation of where the tool is going as well. And when I turn on the two pocket and profile toolpaths, we can get a clearer view of what's going on. So here we can we can cut round the edge of this pocket no problem and leave a sharp um, sharp discontinuity there. But on the male part we can't do that. Okay. Now I can go to the 2D view and as I said before I've got the 2D preview and solid checkboxes switched on so we can see exactly where the tool is going in this case and that shows very clearly the areas that we're unable to cut uh, with our rotating end mill tool. And unfortunately as I said before they are mismatched in the pocket and the male part and that will always be the case. So how do we go about cutting a um, inlay that will actually fit. And that's really the next part of this tutorial. We're going to look at the inlay toolpath strategies for doing this job. Okay, so now I'm going to use exactly the same geometry that we had in the first example, these two identical letter E's. And we're not going to modify those at all, um, so they just remain uh, exact duplicates of one another. And we're going to use the left one to make the pocket and the right one to make the male insert, just as before. But this time we're going to use, instead of using the pocketing and profiling toolpaths, we're going to use this inlay um, toolpath option instead, which will take us through the automatic inlay process. So when I select that, the first thing that we're presented with is the options of the different parts of an inlay that we might want to make. And for the first part of this demonstration, we're going to focus on the straight insert going into a simple female pocket. Um, so exactly matching the initial um, file that we looked at. So I'm going to select the uh, left hand one here which is going to form the pocket and so we go into the pocketing uh, female inlay pocketing toolpath strategy here and this does look very similar to the conventional pocketing toolpath um, but there are a couple of differences. So the first thing we're going to do is set the pocket depth which in this case I'm going to make 0.35 of an inch. The whole material block is half an inch deep uh, we're going to cut it with an, a half inch end mill here. Now that's 
a bit large really but it's for the purposes of the demonstration you're going to want to use a smaller end mill almost certainly than this uh, but I'm going to use the half inch end mill and it's crucial that we remember this tool because when, when we come to do the mail uh, we must make sure we have the same tool geometry otherwise the compensations being made for the tool geometry by the inlay will be mismatched so make sure you use the same tool in both cases uh, that's it for the moment I'm just simply going to select these defaults and click calculate and we get our pocket. So I'm going to preview the selected toolpath, the pocket inlay. And initially, that doesn't look too different. Let me just colour it so that we can see see it more clearly. It doesn't look too different from the conventional pocket. But when we look closely and remember the issues we were focusing on from the last uh, part of this tutorial, you can see that the inlay toolpath, of pocket toolpath, has made a small difference. So here, despite the fact that the pocket can perfectly happily cut this as a sharp corner, the inlay toolpath has not because it knows that ultimately there's got to be a male insert go in here and that male insert cannot be cut with the sharp corner. So although the female pocket could uh, have that cut exactly to match the geometry there's no point doing it because we won't be able to make the matching insert so already we can see that the pocket is slightly different according to the insert now I'm going to go back and we're going to produce the um, equivalent male insert using exactly the same shape here on the right so I go back into the inlay toolpath option on the toolpath manager and this time we're going to use this to create the male insert straight insert uh, again the cut depth is simply the material depth because we are going to cut right the way through the material to cut this shape entirely out. Crucially, we must choose the same tool geometry. So I've got the same half inch end mill in this case as I had to cut the female. And that's it really. Apart from that, I can just click calculate. And again, we can probably already see that this toolpath looks like it's uh, offset out quite a far, uh, quite um, a long way. And when we preview, in fact, we can see that's exactly right. Uh, what's happened here is that although there were parts of this male uh, insert that could be cut with exactly sharp um, corners, um, the inlay version, the male inlay version, has not done that because it knows that the matching pocket on the female inlay could not cut those to match. So what we've ended up here is two is with two shapes that will now fit together. Okay, so the the process of using the pocketing through the inlay system and creating the profiled um, insert through the inlay system has taken account of our tool geometry and made an exactly matching uh, piece. Now at the moment, um, while these are, these are theoretically absolutely perfect matches, so uh, in theory we could take this uh, piece here and we could drop it straight in this gap and there's no reason from the tool geometry why we couldn't do that. In practice you are going to find that you want to make a small allowance. Like most things you're probably going to want to glue this part into place or you're going to be cutting it from um, different materials. Your machine tool might have uh, some limited tolerances. So um, in nearly all cases you're going to leave an allowance and conventionally the allowance is left on the pocket so what we want to do is overcut this pocket by a small amount so that this piece will slot in um, and typically uh, the way that's done is uh, as I say to, to, to add a small uh, extra on the, the pocket so I'm going to go back to the pocket inlay here and the pocket inlay um, while we leave, left most of these options the same it does have this additional uh, option in the middle here of an allowance for the pocket. So we are going to just add in um, 30 thousandths around the edge of this pocket and recalculate it. Now initially we can't see too much. You might see, if I just preview this, you might see it just expand slightly there. But it's much easier to see if we cut to the uh, 2D view and we use the pocket, um, we turn on the pocket inlay toolpath preview in the 2D and make it solid and now if I zoom in here you will see quite clearly that we've uh, overcut this pocket uh, out by 30 thousandths here. You can also see more clearly where we've um, uh, allowed for the radius which must necessarily be on the male matching inserts in this case. If I turn on the male inlay as well we can see the equivalent corner has been cut here to round it off because that's a necessary part of the pocket. Okay, so if we come back here now we can see that this would be a part that we 
we really could use. This piece typically, uh, as we said at the beginning, would be cut from a different piece of material, uh, but having cut it based on the same tool geometry and based on the same vector outline, uh, the resulting part would now slot into the pocket. OK, so that's the simple straight inlay into a pocket example. In this part of the tutorial, we're just going to look at uh, the stepped inlay options and cutting a female hole for the stepped inlay to go in. Um, so I'm just going to start, as before, by clicking on the Inlay Toolpath um, uh, button there on the Toolpath tab. And this time, instead of creating a straight inlay with the right-hand letter, I'm going to make a stepped inlay. So I select the stepped inlay. It's pretty much the similar layout to the one we saw before, but it does have these two additional fields here. So we're still going to set the cut depth to be 0 0.5 an inch, which is the full depth of our material, so that we cut the shape entirely out of the material. Uh, but we can now add some different step values. So what we can do is decide how we're going to cut this shape. And I'm going to allow um, about a quarter of an inch around the edge for a um, shoulder of our shape. And I'm going to cut down to um, just short, an eighth of an inch short of the full depth. So we'll leave just an eighth of an inch um, of depth here. So one interesting thing you can do is use the uh, auto calculation. We know that the, the material depth is Z, so I want to cut down to whatever Z minus an eighth of an inch is. So I can do Z minus 0 0.0125 and press equals, and it fills in that value for me if I want to be a bit lazy about my math. And now I can click calculate. And if we preview that uh, toolpath, we'll see that what we've ended up with is a similar letter to the one we had before, but it's allowed a shoulder here. Uh, around the edge of the letter which will allow us to fit it into the pocket that we're now going to cut or the hole in fact that we're going to cut and this technique is typically used to um, let's just turn the color on here so we can see more clearly uh, this is this technique is used to uh, put letters in the back of a sign that we've we've cut through to allow for them to to show so let's cut the matching uh, female now just to complete the demonstration if I select that shape and I'm going to go back into my inlay toolpath uh, tool here and I'm going to create a hole right the way through the job in this case so the cut depth is 0.5 the full width of the um, the full depth, sorry, the thickness of the material. And again, making sure I've got the same tool uh, geometry selected as I use to create the step mail insert. I can just calculate that and preview the toolpath results. We can get rid of the waste material in the middle there. And now you can see that I've, I've got a, a matching hole in the material into which this could be inserted from behind so that we would only see the top surface.